Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Tigers franchise mode here in MLB The Show 21. So in last episode we had the entire off season and now we're up here at the start of the season. We probably have some tough decisions on who we want to send down at the end of spring training. Uh, so we haven't actually simmed through spring training yet. As well as we do have a lot of big contracts to give out for future years. So we're going to start off with doing the contracts before we actually sim through the uh, spring training. And then also, I will probably have to put some players on waivers to send them down to AAA. Uh, but we need to get some guys locked up because there's some pretty big players like Corona, McElroy, Mize, Jordan, Garcia, Tucker, Selby, Hirsch, Valdez that all need big contracts, I would say. So let's start off with the contracts. And we'll start off with Diego Corona since he's our best closer by far. We'll do five years from him and see if we could talk him down to like 80. We probably can't get him down to 80 mil. We could try 83 and he's going to accept that. We got to get Chauncey back because he's a key piece of this team as well. How much money do we have? We have a decent amount, I think. We can probably get him for 155. He's going to accept that as well. Uh, David Jordan's arbitration eligible, which maybe I'd take him to arbitration, but then he'd be awarded like 20 million. I might get him to a two-year deal and get him obviously for a little bit cheaper because obviously we need to save some money. Because, yeah, I don't want to end up spending too much and not being able to get some of these guys back. So David Jordan, we should be able to get him to like a two-year deal at like 6.3. Yep, that is good. Dennis Tucker, he's a relatively cheap player because he's only in his second season, I think, now. So we could uh, get him for 2.7 probably. Yep, there you go. Chad Hirsch, he's a bit of an expensive player. We, I don't know if I want to get him for too long term. Let's get him for one to two years since he's already 28 because he might be on decline soon. Don't want to get him to too long term of a deal. 5.5, 5, that's good for me. Fernando Valdez, I'm fine with locking up for five years even though he's already 29. Because he's a very good batter for us. We'll see if we get him to 54 mil. That's accepted. And now that still leaves Casey Mize, who's a very big one as well. Man, this is a very expensive team. Man, he wants a lot for five years. We probably could give him an extra year. And talk him down to maybe 112 million. That's accepted. Garcia is a decently big one. Let's see if we get him for less. I could get him for three years maybe and save a lot of money. Which I probably will do, and then he'll have arbitration after that, which is good, because then we could get him back still. So we'll do a three-year deal, which will take him until he's 31 years old. And we will try and get him for 9.2, which he's going to accept. And yeah, pretty much Abrams. I don't know if he's going to come back, because he's very expensive, probably. Willie Castro, we could always let go of as well. Selby, what does he want? Wow, he wants a lot, and he has barely even played. Huh. I could get him for a three-year deal. But I don't know. I think he's going to be in our lineup this year. But his morale is not that good. So we'll try and get him to, like, a three-year deal and get him for relatively cheap as well. We might have to trade away some players at some stage to get more money. Uh, 10.6 for three. It's good for me. Moreno doesn't need to come back as he's 33, probably. Pierre's probably expensive. Eh, not terrible. And then Arozina, I don't think he's going to come back because of his age. Even though he's good. Bronson Bonner, we could get for like three years. Get him for relatively cheap probably as well. Because we don't have really a hell of a lot of catchers in the system. 4.6 for three, that's good for me. Dan Pereira wants a lot. So yeah, I think it's between Pereira and Montenegro which one leaves. Hmm. I don't know. We'll leave that stuff for now. I think the rest of it. But yeah, we just spent a lot on all those players. Because if we go to our budget, what do we got? We still got 20 million available in budget. 
which isn't a whole lot. So we're probably going to end up losing some pretty big players this offseason. But anyways, those are the contracts that we're going to dish out. Let's uh, sim through pre uh, the spring training a little bit. And then we're going to make our own decisions on who we want to send down. So let's go to the last game of the spring training. Yeah, let's go last game of spring training. Very good spring training so far. 13 and 13. And now we're going to probably send down some players because we need to go down all the way to 26 players, I'm pretty sure. Actually, we can't do that just yet. I think we got to get that last game of the spring training done. Okay, so spring training is done. Let me just take a look at how some of these players did during spring training. Not very great statistic from some of our pitchers, but that's okay. But okay, now we got to make those tough decisions on who we want to send down. I wrote down actually in my notebook who I want to send down just because I want to keep most of this roster as good as possible, obviously. But I did write down on who we're probably going to be sending down. So we have to send down five pitchers, which in that case, we're going to be sending down Paulino, Wentz, Rodriguez, Castillo, and Grubb. So, first one is Grub. Grub could just go down there to Triple A. Doesn't even go have to go through waivers, which is nice. Castillo, I believe, as well. Yep. And then Rodriguez, I said. Yeah, Rodriguez as well. Triple A. Because he's got minor league options. Wentz is going to pass through waivers, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he is. If he gets claimed, it's not the end of the world because we got a lot of pitchers. We'll put him on waivers. And then the other one is Robbie Polino, who, yeah, he won't pass through waivers either, which is good. So for pitcher-wise, we're not going to lose uh, really anybody because of those send-downs. A lot of these guys are going to end up being relief pitchers for us, these starters. And then closing pitcher-wise, we are going to send down Messias, was it? No, it's Chavez and Morales. So Chavez is going to go down to AAA, which is one of his minor league options. Same with Morales. So that's good on that front. Yeah, that's good. And then we're also going to have to send down a shortstop, which is going to be Vincent Means. Even though he is a 79, yeah, he's going to get sent down to Triple A. Just because we got a lot of guys that are good at shortstop, but we're probably going to be using Abrams as an outfielder. And who else do we got written down? We're going to probably be sending down Robbie Harvey, which he will have to pass through waivers. I believe. Yeah, he'll have to pass through waivers. And then we also have to send down Peraria, Veras, and McKenna for right fielders. So Peraria could not get claimed. He gets actually optioned, which is good. And then, yeah, Varus is going to have to go through waivers, I'm pretty sure. But he might not get claimed anyways. So we'll remove him to AAA. And then I said Kiki McKenna? Yeah, Kiki McKenna. Who I think has minor league options still, so that's good. So that drops us down to 28 out of 40, but we would need only 26 roster players. So we still technically need to send out two more players. Which I did not write down yet who I wanted to send down. Because I wasn't sure... Hmm. I could send down Drew Waters potentially in favor of Eros Arena because Eros Arena has way better power. I mean, Drew Waters is not that bad of a player, though, is the only thing. And you had actually a really good spring training. Montenegro didn't really do that well, so does Montenegro have options? He does. Okay, so we're going to send down Pierre Montenegro to AAA as well. Option him down for now. He might get called up at some point, and then we need to send down one more player, I'm pretty sure. Which, in that case, who are we going to send down? Not going to send down Castro. So Daniel needs to be up here because he was a Rule 5 pickup, and he was pretty good, actually, when he was up here. Um, hmm, Might be another pitcher that we have to send down. I'm not going to send down Christian Franco because he was also a Rule 5 pickup, and he's also got really good hits per 9. So I really want to keep this guy in our lineup, I think. It might have to be Moreno, but Moreno was fantastic last year. He wasn't that great during spring training, but he might be the one we have to do. Selby has no minor league options left. Tucker definitely does, but I don't want to send him down. 
Perez is way too good to send down. Hmm. Gerald Martin's too good. Hmm. I think it's got to be Moreno. Yeah, I think it's got to be Moreno. We send Moreno down and then some of these starters become relievers. And then Franco is basically just replacing Moreno. Yeah, Moreno's on a one-year deal anyways. We will send him down to AAA. Yep, because he has a minor league option as well. So that is basically what our roster is going to look like now. Let me just make sure our lineups are set up as well, which technically they are, I think, still. Yep, our lineups are still good. What about our pitching rotation? That is... Yeah, that's the way I would probably have it. Chauncey, Casey, Jordan, Martin, and Manning. Relievers, I'd have all those guys. And then we'd change Joe Green and Rodrigo Messias because Rodrigo Messias is technically eh, is technically a closer. So I'll probably use him as a setup guy. And then, yeah, Franco and Joe Green as our mid-relievers, which are pretty good. Long reliever-wise, we'd have Tucker, Perez, and Selby, which I think I'm okay with. Those guys are all starting pitchers, really, but we'll use them as relievers. So our pitching looks good as well. And we actually make sure the uh, pitching rotations are set up for AAA and stuff like that as well. Actually, I can't even check that yet until spring training is done, so that is good. We're going to wait on those contracts. Let's him to the start of the regular season. There we go. Transactions, get rid of these notifications. Damn, there's 64 notifications. I'm not going to tech those all, so... There we go. Uh, we are 7th now in power, 15th in contact, 13th ranked, 2nd best in pitching, 27th in defense, and 19th speed. That's not too bad. Let's just make sure the pitching rotations are set up for AAA and AA. So, we need one more player to be set up as a starter in AA, which in that case, do we have another starter that could work? I think we must have to go with Colby Wyatt. So we'll take Wyatt put him in there. And then, yeah, we'll just leave the rest of that the way it is, I think. Yeah, we'll probably use the rest of that the way it is. And then for AAA, we need to have Grubb as a starter. Morales shouldn't even be a starter. He's a closer. So we'll take him out. Gerson Moreno's a relief pitcher, so he needs to be like a long reliever, I think. Maybe actually a mid reliever. And then Castillo is a starter. Rodriguez is a starter. Rodriguez is probably going to be one of the aces down there. Robbie Polino is going to be a starting pitcher, obviously, as well. Polino is way too good to be down there, I think. But he has to be down there. Morales is a closer. Mayer is a relief pitcher. We'll flip those two around. We don't have a fifth starting pitcher down there at triple. Hmm. So I guess somebody has to be a starter that isn't a starter. Who has the best uh, stamina? Nobody has good stamina. Ugh. I might have to throw in somebody. I mean, I could use Morales as a closer and try and Chavez because he's got 38 stamina. Which is weird doing that, but we'll try it. So we just need somebody to be a setup guy, which in that case, I guess, is going to be... I don't really care who it is, honestly. Let's just take one of these mid-relievers. But, uh, yeah, we don't have really a lot of pitchers in our system anymore in Triple A, it looks like. So we could always move up some guys from double to triple, but I think I'll let the AI decide on those type of things. Yeah, I'll probably let the AI decide on that. But anyways, we are set up and ready to go. Who is the top prospects this year? Carmen Nunez is number six, so it's going to be nice to see him in the lineup. Chavez is in triple or double. Rodrigo Messias in his first season, so that's going to be nice to see that. Michael Bland is in double still. Hmm. Okay, let's get started with the season simulation, and we'll also uh, get into the draft in this episode, and then that will be pretty much it. So let's sim up to uh, draft day and see how this team does. I'm really not sure exactly how this team will simulate. Hopefully we'll be around 500 again at draft day, but let's see what happens. We win game one, seven to six, and we already have an important message, apparently. Hopefully it's not an injury. Transactions completed. Nothing there. Pending. 
nothing there as well. But a good start to the season. We win 7 to 6. We then lose 5 to 2 and once cleared waivers, so that's great. He's actually going to be in Triple A, so that will help out the pitching down there. And let's go back and adjust that Triple A lineup quickly. Wait, Triple A lineup or pitching rotation? Let's get Wentz in there. Let's flip this around. Yeah, something like that. That works. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Let's go for that. And it should be good. If it's his to auto adjust the lineups, we'll just do that. Yeah, auto fix lineups for AAA is fine. We're off to a good start this year. Really good start. We're above 500. And we'll auto fix AA because I don't really care about AA as much. Auto fix double A again, and yeah, let's stop simulating. Why not? We're 22 and 16. Much better start this year than last year. We are first in our division as well. Oh boy, and uh, yeah, it's, our power is getting way better. So I don't know if the addition of uh, Arrows Arena is helping us out or what. We'll definitely check that out when we get to the draft, though. Pending, that's good. Any injuries so far this year? Maybe. Yeah, we do have. Yeah, we do have a couple injuries, but they're guys in double A. William Doe and Charles Arrington. Both of them are out for one to two months, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Let's continue to sim up to draft day, and then we'll take a look at how good our roster's been doing so far. But pretty good start. A little bit, uh, a lot of losses as of late, actually. That's kind of risky. And yeah, we're below 500 now. We dropped a lot of games during the end of that. Well, that, that turned uh, really quickly. I don't know if we suffered an injury that helped us out. Well, let's take a look at our player stats so far. So uh, the season, so Chauncey's 1-6, so he's not been winning games, but he's got a great ERA and whip, which is interesting. Don't know why he's not winning games. He's been fantastic so far. Uh, Casey's been pretty good. His ERA is a little high and his whip is a little high, but he's winning games. David Jordan's been pretty good. Matt Manning's been pretty good. Perez has been pretty good. Tucker's been pretty decent. I'd say ERA is a little high as well. Selby's been pretty good, but his whip is a little high. And then Gerald Martin has been okay as well. So pitching doesn't look fantastic so far. Relief-wise, though, Joe Green's been really good. And uh, Kristen Franco has been fantastic. He's not allowed a single run in 11 innings as a relief pitcher. Really happy with to bring this guy in, even though he's dropping off at 27. He's a good reliever. Closing pitcher-wise, Corona's not been fantastic so far. And Rodrigo Messias has been terrible. Holy. But Sammy Chavez has been really good down there. We could always call up Chavez and send down Messias, but... I don't know about that. Messiah will be on his last minor league option. In terms of catcher wise, so far Bonner's not been great. All right, yeah, Bonner and Hirsch have been really not that great to be honest. And then Conrad Colvin has been horrible, which I don't get. He's hitting a 193. He dropped down to an 87. It seems like age is catching up to a lot of our team. But yeah, this is a terrible season from Conrad Colvin. He's getting paid 10.6 million. Yeah, because we might have to trade away his contract if we he continues to play that bad. Uh, but Fernando Valdez has been pretty good, hitting a 267. He is dropping off as well, but he does have a better OPS last year, than this year than any other year of his career, it seems like. Uh, what else we got here? Second baseman wise, Cortez has been really good, hitting a 269. I like that. Uh, and then everybody else doesn't really matter too much. Third baseman wise, our rookie Carmen Nunez has been pretty good. He's got eight, eight home runs, 23 RBIs, but a 227 average isn't fantastic really. But uh, I mean, it's not bad for a 21 year old. He'll probably develop pretty good because he's got good power. And then Cedeno has been really good at bat at, off the bench. So very impressed with that. CJ Abrams has been fantastic, hitting a 303. Garcia has been good. And Castro's been not that great, but he hasn't played much. Okay. Then left fielding wise, Gary Harris has been really good, hitting at 262. Packard's been really good, hitting at 289. Waters has been fantastic, hitting at 310. Arizona's not been good off the bench. 
He's dropped down to an 80. So yeah, he's definitely not getting re-signed. Surprised he's not been that good as a bench player. Hmm, yeah, he's been horrible so far. Hopefully he bounces back a little bit. And yeah, then we don't have any right fielders in our lineup. We could always call up Pierre Montenegro if we need to because he's got good power. Maybe and send down Randy. Randy actually has minor league options, so I think I'm actually going to do that already. We're going to move Randy down to AAA, and we are going to call up Pierre Montenegro. That's because Pierre Montenegro seems like he's doing a lot better anyways, so might as well do that. And that is good. And injured list. What do we have for injuries? Nothing, really. Let's get into this draft quickly, even though this episode is already around 20 minutes. Let's get into it and draft some players. Uh, even though we don't really know what uh, the draft class looks like. We have 10th overall, so that's not too bad. What do we got for prospects? We got some blue chips. That's great. Maybe we go with this right fielder. No, he's a project player. Or we go with a closer. That's 18. That's not a bad option considering Corona. I don't know how long before he starts to drop off. Could use closers. Hmm. Let me just sort this by overall or potential, actually. No, or actually, let's sort by overall. And see if there's anybody that's scouted pretty decently. Hmm. 80 and 70, but not really scouted. 80 and 70, not really scouted. 80, 70, decently scouted. Hmm. Some of these pitchers might be pretty good, these two. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like this is a good pitching draft for starting pitchers. The question is, do we want to go with a pitcher already? And I wouldn't say it's a bad option if we want to get more pitchers into the system. Hmm. Or I could just go with one of the blue chips and then hope the pitchers are good for next round. Because this guy's a project player for sure. These guys look like kind of project closers. See, so yeah, I think we might have to go with a starting pitcher here. Like if we go back to the potential. Or actually the overall portion. Who do we got that's like young and starting overall? Okay, so. Luis Bourbon might be good. Yeah, Luis Bourbon might be my pick, honestly. A 20-year-old that's a 70-plus overall, but he's not fully scouted. is a little bit risky. There's a 21-year-old that might be really good, too. Hmm. But that 18-year-old that has... Hmm. I might take the 18-year-old. Because the 70 stamina is pretty good right now. Everything else, though, doesn't look fantastic at this rate, but it's not fully scouted. I might still just take a chance with Bourbon. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take a chance with Bourbon. I don't really care about... Well, I do care about this draft, but at the same time, I don't really care how great out of, of an overall these players are, I don't think, out of the gate. But uh, what else we got here? Potential-wise, a relief pitcher. Hmm, this guy might be decent. We do need relievers. This 20 years old. Steven Saylor. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this guy. Even though he has a 2034 plus ETA, I'm going to take this dude because we do need relievers. Because we are pretty low on relievers and we've been using a lot of starting pitchers as relievers. So, uh, what else we got here? 19 year old starting pitcher. Might not be bad again to take another pitcher. Hmm. We're pretty thin in a lot of our positions. There's not really anything else that intrigues me. Like, there is a left fielder. We do need left fielders, but not much potential in that guy. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the 19-year-old starting pitcher. Yeah, I'm going to go with this dude. Why not? We also should draft a catcher. If there's one, which I think there was... Yeah, there's this guy that might be a decent catcher. We don't know anything about this dude, but we do need a catcher prospect behind uh, Hirsch and Bonner, so we'll take him. Even though he might be terrible, might as well get one in for our system. Trying to make this draft go as fast as possible to an extent as well. 
Uh, we don't really need second baseman. First and third, we technically need sort by potential again. Another starting pitcher. I mean, all these starting pitchers, we could always trade some of them away if we need to. Maybe I'll take a left fielder. This guy, though, looks like a project player for sure, which is not good. Yeah, his draft is dropping off. It looks like a little bit in quality. It's another relief pitcher prospect, but we don't know if this guy's actually this good. But I'm going to take him anyways for... Why not? Just because he's young. If he's a low overall, has a high potential, that's not a bad thing. Because we could still maybe get them in. And final few picks of this draft. Starting pitcher, 20 year old. Eh. Don't really know how good any of these guys are anymore though. Hmm. I could just take a random shot in the dark with some of these prospects. We do need more third baseman. There is Alexis Angel or Angel from Puerto Rico. Yeah, well, you know what we're gonna actually he's a high injury risk, it looks like. Which is not a good thing. Obviously we do not want a guy to get injured and then his career is done. Uh hmm. I'm gonna go with this left fielder, Kurt Kellenberger, just because he's a cool name, why not? And we got one more pick left of this draft. Hopefully we could find an absolute steal here, which in this case does not look like it. I might just take another reliever. Yeah, I'm gonna just take this random reliever. Robbie Bingham. And let's see how good our draft was, because that was like the fastest I've ever done went through an entire draft before. So Let's see, sign draft picks. Our first round pick was a 63 overall, C potential, 75 potential. That's not great. It's not a terrible pick, but this guy's not going to be probably much of anything, but we'll still sign him up. Uh, Steven Saylor, 54 overall at 20 is not good, but we will still sign him since he's a relief pitcher prospect. Santana, 87 potential, 57 overall at 19. Eh, we'll still sign him up. Castro was not good. 62 overall at 19 is not terrible, but being a 72 potential isn't great, but we'll still sign him since we need a catcher prospect. Leo, Leo Gordado, 71 potential. 65 overall at 18 is pretty good, but once again, not a lot of potential, but who knows, his potential could go up. Kurt Kellenberger, 77 potential, 53 overall at 18. We'll still sign him. And then Ryan Bingham is not good. So we're not going to probably sign him, but that is our draft. Let's take a quick look at who is leading the all-star voting, and then that will be it for this episode. So starting pitcher-wise, we got anybody up there? Doesn't look like it. We'll just scroll through this quickly. I guess Houston's really good this year. <laughs> oh my god. They're going to win probably a third World Series in four years or something. Any relievers up there for us? No, no any no closers as well. Actually, Corona is up there, but he's not anywhere close to Jeffrey Martins. Catcher-wise, nobody's up there for us. For baseman-wise, Fernando Valdez might make the All-Star game, which is good. Hopefully, he does end up making it. Second baseman-wise, Eduardo Cortez is up there, but I don't think he's going to make it over all these other dudes. Uh, third baseman-wise, don't really have anybody up there, I don't think. Shortstop-wise... CJ Abrams is up there for us, but I don't know if he's going to make it. And then left fielding wise, Taylor Farrell. This guy went in the same draft as uh, Gary Hara did. He was the other left fielding player, and he's a pretty good player. A very good player, actually. Damn. Yeah, Gary Hara's up there and votes as well, which is nice. What else we got here? Center fielders. Okay. Hmm. And right fielding wise is that. Okay. So anyways guys that's going to do it for this episode of our Detroit Tigers franchise mode. So in next episode I don't know maybe we make trades. I don't know. Maybe our team will find itself again. But they kind of started the season off really good and have fallen apart as of late. So hopefully we can turn it around in next episode. So let me know what you guys think down below. And I'll see you guys next time.